Hello again, dorks. I mean, truthers. Um, so I hope y'all had a merry Saturnalia, and I hope Santa Claus came down your chimney even though you didn't have one, and I hope the elves made you that PS5 console in the North Pole. Um, it, I just, I was just binging the original Star Trek all day, honestly, and luckily work paid me to stay home, so... I mean, I grew up Jewish, so I'm I'm getting Hanukkah, you know, cards for my family, but I keep telling them I don't celebrate anything. Not Hanukkah, not Christmas. <clears throat> and in fact, Hanukkah, it's it's the negation of Christmas. The Festival of Lights and the, the menorah was put up in the synagogues in the old days to specifically negate Christmas because all the synagogues were noticing the Baal and Grove worship Baal or Baal or whatever you want to call him. Um, he was born December 25th, and Jeremiah says that people sacrifice their kids to him in the fire. Okay? And then in Ezekiel 8, 14, <clears throat> God's walking around, or Ezekiel's walking around, and God says, look at these other abominations I'm going to show you. And there behold are women weeping for Tammuz. Okay? Tammuz, also born December 25th. Nimrod, Dionysus, Hercules. Okay, people born December 25th when there wasn't even a, a Gregorian or Julian calendar yet. And again, if you're a real Jesus freak, Jesus didn't know. Uh, Jesus used the Hebrew calendar, okay? So if you want to claim to celebrate his birthday, you know, make it be called the 25th of, or 14th of Nisan or whatever it is. But that's not true either because we don't know when Jesus was born. I theorize that Jesus was born in 6 BCE, March 1st, because, I don't know, five planets were in the sign of Pisces. And the age of Pisces had just begun, basically, during his birth. Jesus is the messianic fulfillment of the age of Pisces. And guess what body part Pisces rules? The feet. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. What is Pisces? The two fish. What did Jesus do? He gave two fishes, two fish to everyone and a loaf of bread, because he's the bread of life. What is the color of Pisces? It's purple. Well, when they put a crown of thorns on him, they gave him a purple robe and mocked him. Um, and, and the thing about skeptics of Jesus is like, well, if he was the Messiah, why did he die? Why, you know, all the Jews were like, we're waiting for a king Messiah, like King David, to slaughter all the Romans. <laughs> because the Jews were so used to Yahweh killing all their enemies. They're like, okay, well, the next Messiah, he'll kill the Romans for us. Well, he didn't kill the Romans. But he did say there won't be one stone left of the temple, um, uh, you know, of the in Jerusalem. And of course, we have the Wailing Wall. So the wall is still there. And skeptics will say his prophecy is wrong because the wall is still there. I say to them, not during the end times, it won't be. <laughs> when when the, the stone of Daniel 2 or the star of Revelation 9, <clears throat> when that hits earth, That'll knock down the rest of the wall, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so people are failing to understand that Jesus' prophecies have not yet come to fruition. So they're like, oh, it didn't come true, so he's not the Messiah. Incorrect, sir, or madam. He didn't, he, he didn't say it would come true in the year 2000 or the year 2012. He said, in, in fact, he said, no one knows the hour, not even the Son, only the Father, Okay. So the stones will be toppled down. It's just a matter of time. Jesus left as the lamb, the slaughtered lamb, the sacrifice, just like the Passover lamb. You put the blood on the doors during the seven, during the um, deadly plagues in the Old Testament. The blood of the lamb saves you, just like the Passover story. Okay, it's in the Ten Commandments. It's all symbolic, and um, it, Jesus dies as the slaughtered lamb, but comes back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, okay? And that's when, uh, you know, it hits the fan, okay? It's not completed yet, is basically my point. Um, <clears throat> and you know, the tree is a fertility symbol. That's why it's er erect with a bunch of white drapings on it, because it symbolized the penis and the sperm, plain and simple. The Baal and Grove worship, every sun god happens to be born December 25th. I wonder why. Well, all the pagans were freezing their asses off and they were praying for the sun to come back. And every time 
the sun came back, it happened to be December 25th, you know, the, the, the winter solstice. The Yule log, that's all paganism. And so it's, you're literally worshiping the weather. Because there's a tilt in the Earth's axis, it's cold certain times of year and it's warmer other times of year. Unless you're a flat earther, then you can just, you know, ask the Virgin Records guy to give you a ride to space to prove you wrong, but you're too, you know, set in your ways to do that, or you're too broke. Either way, go drive off the edge. Oh, there's ice walls there. Prove it. Take a picture. Go on a boat. Take a picture of the edge of the Earth. You know, there's just so much... There's so many ways for you to prove Earth is flat, and you just don't want to because it's just, oh, it's interesting, so I'll believe it. No, we're not children. We don't believe things because it's cool. We believe them because it's true, okay? And all these Christians are like, well, I'll just believe in God, and then I'll have a happy life. No. Ecclesiastes 1.18 says... More wisdom increases suffering. That's what it says. It doesn't say the more you know, the happier everything will be. Our happiness is not to be found on this earth. Our happiness is in the new heaven. We're specifically being tried on this earth. This is the time for the testing. People are like, well, why does bad things happen to good people? Well, I don't know. God killed his own son and he loved him. You know, so I don't want to believe in that God. And you don't have to. I'm not saying you should believe what, I'm, what I believe. That's another thing with politics. The issue with politics today is people want to push their beliefs as law. Just like Sharia law. And for Muslims, they want you to have to believe what the Quran says or will punish you. Whereas America says you can believe whatever you want as long as you're not harming anyone. And these liberals have it in their mind that they say, well, they're Christians and they don't want people to have abortions and they hate gay people. They can believe whatever they want. They can say whatever they want. But y'all are the ones who are taking away rights. Y'all are the ones pushing, you know, uh, transgender stuff into kids' classrooms and forcing them to accept something that their parents don't have to believe in. All of a sudden, we have to be accepting. Oh, yeah, you can be accepting to everyone except a Christian. Don't believe the Christians, but you can believe that and that and that and that. Like, in the meantime, Muslims are just as bigoted if you go to the Middle East. Women still covering their mouths. Women still being beaten. Women being charged for adultery when they were the ones who were sexually assaulted. It's just so backwards. And you, you that's the religion of peace, okay? And not Jesus who said, turn the other cheek. The, the, the list goes on and on and on. Um... Because if you didn't know, it's the end times. And say, well, you have a NASA shirt. What do you know? Well, I know that my grandpa worked for NASA. He worked on Apollo 11, the one that went on the moon. His name's on the moon. Gerald Epstein. He's not my blood grandpa, but he's who I grew up with. So I consider that my grandpa. I don't know my real grandpa. He died when I was like four. <clears throat> um, either way, it, it's just um, it, if you are stuck in believing something because you're comfortable and you think that life, that life's already told you all the secret mysteries, well, guess what? You know, welcome to the matrix. Okay, my job, you know, or my leisure time at least, because I don't get paid for this, um, is to help wake you up and help make you look into a different perspective. Like in my last video, I told you the moon landings were not faked, but the reasons why we went were covered up. You got Buzz Aldrin with his Masonic ring on his on his wedding finger instead of his actual wedding ring because they're more committed to their Illuminati f brotherhood than they are to their wives, their, their kids, or their family. They're specifically have to do like sexual gross things in order to get into the club. It's like Alex Jones was saying um, on uh, Joe Rogan podcast, he was saying when he snuck into Bohemian Grove, he said, there was all these pictures on the wall in the secret buildings of like presidents doing grotesque sexual things. And he's like, hey, is that Truman with the thing up his rear? And they're like, yeah. They Once you join that brotherhood, they force you to do embarrassing, gross things, just like the movie The Skulls, um, in order for you to be held blackmail. Is that is that a loving brotherhood? We have pictures of you, so what are you going to do? You're going to tell anyone? Same with the rappers. All these so-called gangster rappers these days. Who knows what they had to secretly do to get rich and famous? 
a bunch of homosexual stuff. So of course they're going to just keep doing their symbols and all this because they're trapped. Trapped in the game. And it is a game. To everyone who 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 knows. It's just like it's just like LT and the Child five hour long video says, only the Christians and the Satanists really know what's going on. Liberal scientists, um, Muslims, Buddhists, they're just doing their own thing. Whereas Christians know the world is run by the devil and the Illuminati Freemasons are the ones running it for the devil. Okay? They're promised, you know, some eternal life wherever better to re reign in hell than serve in heaven. I don't think that's true. I wouldn't want to rule hell. First of all, I don't want power over people because I don't have those inclinations. And serving doesn't just mean you're going to be doing dishes the whole time. It means you're serving God by offering truth. I, that's, that's my kind of service. I'm Aquarius, the water bearer. I, my service to humanity is to offer truth. It doesn't just mean doing dishes and sweeping floors. So when people say it's better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, no, it's not. It's better to speak truth and serve God's word than it is to rule over a bunch of demons. And that's what they try and do. They try to manifest demons with these Ouija boards and pentagrams on the floor with candles surrounding you. All this Aleister Crowley stuff. Aleister Crowley called himself 666, the Baphomet Beast, and he's a 33-degree Mason. How, how are Masons... I just, sorry, people are intrigued because they know they're being lied to. Um, so they want to join Freemasonry. I want truth. Oh, I know the churches were all lying. Yeah, the churches are lying. That doesn't mean the Bible is lying. That's the big deception. Just because there's idiot rednecks out there who take everything literally, think the world was created in 7,000 years, doesn't mean the Bible is wrong. It means you're looking at the Bible from a surface interpretation. You need to read some Swedenberg. There's earthly truths, uh, spiritual truths, and heavenly truths in every single verse. And if you're just going to look at that earthly, you know, well, the first day it was light. Oh, but there's no sun without the universe. How can there be a sky without when the earth was created before the sun? It's not a physics book. And yet, when we see Gematria, it does show universal constants all the time. So it's like Christians are taking it too literally and hating science but the secret of gematria is that it is scientifically um, based. Genesis 1-1 one, one hides pi. John 1-1 one, hides Euler's number, 2.718, using the same exact formula. Uh, anyway, um, so I'm kind of doing a detox, kind of not, you know, uh, I'm doing drinking as much and stuff like that. And <clears throat> just trying to clear my mind out. Because, once again, I'm 36, not 26, and I'll be 37 next year. And I just have a lot I have a lot more to do instead of just kick back and read. I need to write. Okay, I need to finish typing my stupid book so I can publish it on stupid Amazon or wherever. Lulu is another um, platform that I use. Um, but yeah, so basically Christmas, Christmas, Saturnalia, Yule, whatever... That was me just binging Star Trek all day and not doing anything Christmas related. And it's great because Star Trek, even though it's pop culture, it still gives you interesting lessons. So I grew up with Next Generation and I just saw Deep Space Nine last year. But I never finished the original series, so I am now. Um, but yeah. It, but what's weird is Spock does that thing, you know, and that's actually an old Kabbalistic um, sign that the Jews used to use, okay? And um, this, these people know about it. They just incorporate it and make it something that it's not. <clears throat> and and here, here's another thing really quick. I um, was looking at my goofy coffee mug. I've had this, like, for 20 years. You see these? Six, six six okay i mean we all know disney's uh 33 degree mason with the secret 33 club um and it, then it's just on my coffee mug and i just noticed it yesterday i was like oh there's satanic worship again sip and i'm not the one i'm not like accepting it i'm calling it out 
Okay. Um, it's just the people who don't know about it. They're the ones I'm scared for. I'm not scared for Illuminati. They chose their path. I'm scared for the people who are still asking questions. I'm curious about the people who are still wondering if I'm right or I'm wrong. Um, I believe I'm right, of course, or else I wouldn't be posting this stuff. Um, but what, what, what troubles me is that when I find something awesome, to me it's mind-blowing. To someone else it's like, oh, that's interesting. No, it's not interesting. It's not just interesting, it's genius. It's not just genius, it's spiritual. It's not just spiritual, it's literally the meaning of life. So maybe I, you know, uh, I, I don't look before I leap sometimes, but sometimes you need that leap of faith. Say, hey, well, what if this? And then all of a sudden you find a, a truth you weren't looking for. See, that's the issue with my channel. People don't Google, is Nietzsche the Messiah? Or the, the, the 1844 prophet? It's just something you come across when you happen to see me talk about something else. So my channel doesn't take off because they're not looking for things because I'm the first one to discover them. They're not looking to see, oh, 1987 is the Quetzalcoatl return. I have to tell you, oh, by the way, 1987 is the Quetzalcoatl return. The second one after the 1844 one, using a different calendar. Same Toltec calendar than the Olmec calendar. You know, it's... It's a new paradigm, you know, and at this point, I can only keep going forward. And and since I'm getting more clear-minded, not drinking as much, I think it's going to get better for me. The world's going to shit, but you and I, we're going to keep moving forward. And because the world is ending, that's even more confirmation for us. They're like, oh yeah, well, the Bible says that. All these Christians think there's some great reformation and angels coming down from the skies. No. The flesh cannot, flesh cannot uh, inherit the kingdom of God. So that means we have to die before we see the kingdom of God. It's not coming down here and everyone will be Christian. How could there be a great revival if Jesus says he has a little flock? How can there be a great revival if he says narrow is the way? This world is getting worse, whereas our souls are getting more um, fulfilled, you know, in that kind of way. You know, the Nephilim return is going to be part of the end times prophecy. They're already talking to these beings. They use, um, you know, remote viewing to talk on, to talk to people like aliens on the moon. Once again, what is that book by Richard C. Hoagland? Dark Mission. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, here it is. Sorry, I got a lot of books. I'm trying to finish. Richard C. Hoagland, Dark Mission. <laughs> you know. And there's, there's pictures, too, so many pictures showing the different um, planetary alignments and different pyramids on the moon that they just kind of Photoshop out of there. No biggie. So we're being lied to. The moon is hollow. The moon is actually the apple of, of the Garden of Eden because guess what? As Dave, David Icke showed, the arrival of the moon somehow suppresses our pineal glands. And there's multiple cultures that said there was a society before the moon was even here. Okay? I've already talked about this. And so when the moon came, sent by the reptilians because it's hollow, which means it's a spaceship, they put it specifically there so you could have perfect sun alignments, perfect eclipses, just happens to be at the exact spot to make a full uh, eclipse or a lunar eclipse. Like, it's not coincidental. The aliens put it there to suppress our pineal glands, and that is the fall of mankind. The moon is the apple, okay? And NASA has already said, uh, Richard Solomon says, you know, the moon was ringing like a bell for three hours when we purposefully crashed a satellite into it. It's like they do an experiment and then don't actually expose the results. We have to find out later. Well, why'd you do the experiment? Well, because what we found was scary and y'all aren't ready for it. Well, then don't do the experiment because we're going to find out. NASA, which almost happens to look like Satan, if you just add a T. It's like Santa Claus is Satan. You know, it's all deception. Okay. You know, let, let's cause deforestation of fir trees with Christmas um, and then claim we're going green by buying organic food at twice the price. It's just such a backwards culture. We we It's like we use the opposite things to justify uh, our own bias. 
Okay, that's about 20 minutes. Um, I'm on my lunch break. Got to get back to work. I'll take it easy. And um, don't watch the news. Okay? Don't be a part of the world. And, and if you are a part of the world, and if you are using YouTube and Instagram, use it for a good means. Not memes. Means. Okay? Post a selfie every now and then, but don't have that be your whole thing. For me, it's like 99... 99 truth memes, and then, you know, maybe a picture of me just to see how great my hair got since then. Okay, I'll take it easy.